I travel a lot on different adventure motorcycles, and this is my Kawasaki vs. 1000 review. When my dealer gave me its keys, they told me to ride it as I stole it. So that's how I did. I rode it so no cop in the world paid any attention. And here is another day of a commuter discussing leader adventure motorcycles. For my test, I got a latest generation S version. I'm going to explain why I didn't prefer an SE soon. Naming is a problem for a motorcycle. If I ask you about a Kawasaki Versys, what will come to your mind? Exactly, I think its owners have to advocate for it. What do you ride? Versys, but wait, it's a different one. It's the Versys 1000. The whole point of having the same name for a lineup is when a reputation of your toppest bike is selling your smaller ones. As an example, 310 GS is almost a legendary GS. It has the same colors for its 40 years anniversary and people recognize its silhouette. The same is not applied to the Versys. Its smaller 650 version, which was born much earlier and it's now owning the market. By getting the same name, the Versys 1000 is getting all its flaws but doesn't get any strengths because the 1000s undersell and no one reminds them. I'd call it Hyper Versys or Versys X, but for some reason they gave this name to their 300cc model and you might not even notice a difference between a 650 and a 1000 for a 10 meters distance, while these two are completely different motorcycles. Let's say a V-Storm 650 and its lighter version share many elements. They are motorcycles of a single conception, and while sitting on a 1000, you'll often think, oh, this thing is the same as that on a 650. And on the Versys, it is completely different. The 1000 is built different with different components. Even more, the 1000 has a four-cylinder engine, while the 650 has a twin, so the engine's characters are so much different from each other. The Versys 1000 was born in the golden era of adventure motorcycles in 2012, when during a couple of years the market was joined by a dozen new bikes. Also, the old bright colors were removed, so now most of their bikes can be green and black or black and green. Sometimes there is only one green option. The only pros is that you can buy a gear from Kawasaki and it'll match any motorcycle of the company. They all are like twins the same as Team Orange, but there you can at least take a Husky. Starting from 2019, Cowie has its third generation, a light redesign. Suspension is a bigger change, but I didn't throw my leg over the older mode, so I cannot judge if it made a difference. Your opinion about the Versys depends on your point of view. From one side, it's a lighter bike. That means it should be compared with its only competitor, the BMW S1000XR which is much more powerful and sporty. Yes, that's true, but if you change your viewing angle, you notice that the XR's price makes it compete in a Multistrada V4 segment right from the beginning. As an example, the S is much more expensive than a Multistrada V2, and the SE is even pricier than a Multistrada V2 that beats the hell out of the Cowie in terms of their components, looks, and its versatility. But a basic version is four to 500 euros cheaper than a basic V-Storm 1050, and that is a game changer. And now the Versys is in the same class as the V-Storm 1050, BMW F900XR, Yamaha Tracer 9, and Triumph Tiger 900 GT. And here it happens to be the most powerful either on paper or on how you feel it. It's a real lighter bike, but with no butts. It has a good level of comfort, specs, etc. amongst its real competitors. You get more motorcycle for a reasonable price. And it's here for a while, so it has good credit for its reliability. Plus, she is the only one for its price that has a four-cylinder engine. That gives her such a unique character. So if you take a look from this angle, then yes, most of its competitors have something special, but I just cannot get how someone can buy a 900XR instead of the Versys 1000. The Cowie is just 10 or 15% pricier, but right from its factory it has better features and mods, so for real there is no difference in price. 
The second important thing about its character is that the Verses is pretty unique on a deeper level. Let me explain. It was difficult to make that S1000XR review because it's made just for hotheads. So it's like I'm reviewing a motorcycle that's not my cup of tea. And it's a tough job. People might enjoy different things. There is no single opinion about what's better, tea or coffee. So of course there's no one opinion about motorcycles. There are some who need to blow off steam. They scream at speed, do wheelies, they make loud sounds to communicate to others and stuff like that. And there are other people who get strengths from being in flow or, as an example, from their solitude. I mean, being inside themselves, avoiding surrounding mess. So if the XR puts you out of your shell, then the Versus 1000 adapts to any mood. The Cowie might be fast, and at the same time, it doesn't push you to go fast and it just lets you just roll on your journey. It has decent comfort, a pleasing suspension, and an elastic motor if you just want a chill ride. It's like it's saying, hey, you do have a power, just know it, but don't use it if you don't want to. If you compare the Versys to its direct competitors, sporting touring bikes with upright seating position, it feels like a heavy piece of iron. That's pretty natural when you're the heaviest from motorcycles of the type. Keep in mind that it weighs more than a KTM 1290 Super Adventure, Pan America, Multistrada V4, Africa Twin, New Tiger 1200, and even more than a standard 1200 GS. But this is a road-only motorcycle, so it's not even an issue, nor a coincidence. It's the touring among others. What I appreciate the most in my Honda Cross Tour is its massiveness. What I liked in Versys is that she's not a super shot wannabe and she's not ashamed to be an elephant. And the reason for that is Kawasaki has a purebred super sport with clip-ons in their lineup. Firstly, the Versys is thick. She's almost a meter wide from handguard to another and her mirrors are even wider. So it's as wide as the widest 1200cc adventures, so choosing a Versys is a weird choice for city commuting. Her competitors, such as Tracer 9, Tiger 900 GT, and 900 XR, are about 4 inches thinner in all key points, and that makes a difference in traffic. Secondly, the Versys has a huge seat for both rider and a passenger. It's almost too big. Even many 1200cc adventure motorcycles have smaller seats. The seat itself is pretty spongy. It's a pretty mediocre seat, but if you put some gel in it or just replace it, I won't be surprised if it becomes the most comfortable seat among all adventure bikes and crossovers. As a result, the Versys 1000 is the best adventure motorcycle for its price for two-up touring. And here is my favorite thing that shows her massiveness. Look what a tiny space is used for the toolkit. I'm not sure I've seen that huge of a seat trunk in modern bikes. There is enough space to carry a tool for any possible situation. A chain loop, an air compressor, and so on. Because the seat is wide and the foot pegs are just where you want to put your shins, she wouldn't fit any height. You should leave a little gap, but the Versys is already a pretty seat-tall motorcycle if you compare it to the 900, so to be a little more confident, you might get a 2cm lowered seat. The Ergo is pretty conventional for sports tours and crossovers, not the most comfiest in the world. The knees are relaxed, the handlebar is low enough and set a little forward. Before that, they usually make you lean a little forward, so it was a little similar to sport touring with clip-ons. I'm not sure why. My 188 centimeters can reach it, but at the end of the day, my shoulders are sore. I understand, it's a compromise so you can lean easier. I like the Tracer 9's ergonomics better, but the Versys one is very easy to fix yourself and make it touring. Just add bar risers that have been installed at the first available Versys. I should also mention that the Versys is not a comfortable bike to stand on, in case someone wanted to know. 
The hand protection is superb. It protects you from wind so well that most of the 1200cc adventures will just be jealous while crossovers or sports tours won't even dream about it. The hand guards usually cause high speed stability issues, but not this time. At least under 200 kilometers an hour. Maybe because of those curves on the hand guards. The windshield is weirdly tall for the class, and from a touring perspective, it's the best windshield among all stock ones for the price. With the only exception of an NT1100 that has almost a big tour-like screen. So you cannot say a bad word about the wind protection here. A little remark, it's not completely stock. Here I'm talking about the windshield we get on S and SE versions. The basic one is lower. So here you might be asking me, what are you talking about? Where's the beef? How about the engine? Because the most interesting thing about the motorcycle is how she combines comfort and relaxing with a sporty performance from the lighter inline four. The same was as the Multistrada V4 with her price corrections. It doesn't have the Ducati's power or the comfort, but the price of the Ducati's is 50% higher too. I wouldn't say the Versys has an incredible performance, but it's enough for anything. You can even take it on a track ride. Again, you cannot compare it with an XR or a Multistrada V4. They are on a different level. But for the price, there is no adventure motorcycle who would give you such a performance. It's a decent quick revving inline four. For sure, it's faster than 900 and 1000 cc twins. Of course, the Versys in the narrow roads of Hollands feels like a caged lion. A minor twisting of the throttle and you're speeding earlier than you enjoyed it. So you're either bored or speeding hard. So the low revs are fine enough, you get a decent acceleration, the engine tuning is pretty good from the bottom, so for a city ride, it works well. The RPM range is wide and the engine works well on any RPMs. 90% of my time I spent on the motorcycle I rode in third gear. It starts from 30 km an hour and can be used fine up to 100. So you just go on the freeway having a good oomph. The only times I dropped lower than third were in slow city traffic or to stop before traffic lights. Going higher than the third made sense only on highways. The main reason for it was that I don't want to overspeed, and the third gear helped me a lot. If it wasn't for the case, I would prefer the fourth gear on the same streets. It's also because the quick shifter is very rough. It only works smoothly on a narrow RPM range. The only problem range is up high so you cannot reach it in the city. An example, it would work well if you switch to the third gear at around 80 km an hour, but the traffic is going 60 so you're stuck on second and the engine is unpleasantly loud. That's why when you're riding in traffic it's easier to use clutch and it's a good thing because the clutch is soft and comfortable. So you leave the quick shifter for the highway, there it works like a charm. I wouldn't say it's difficult to find a neutral here, you just have to work a little gentler so you don't skip it. And as you would expect from four cylinders, the fuel economy is worse than on its competitors. The claimed consumption rate is 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Yes, you can ride it like that, but I'd expect to see more on a bit north of 6 liters. So even 1200cc twins have a liter less consumption in similar conditions. And that's what you would usually expect from any four-cylinder bike. But because the Versys has a 21 liter tank, even with the lower mileage on gallon, you get a higher mileage on Philip than from most of its competitors. The stock sound is very unpleasant. I don't expect that a motorcycle should sound like something you would listen as a cynic record while enjoying a bottle of wine, but here it's not about aesthetics. The engine is designed to work at higher RPMs, so it just annoys you in a city. If you go slower than 100, it pushes on your head a little, so in the end of the day, you get a headache, even with earplugs. 
If you hold it on more or less lower RPMs, the problem is still there. It's in the frequency range itself. It might be my personal flavor. I know a guy who likes the Versi sounds. There is a mod from Acropivic, but I have nothing to say about it. I didn't try it. But it might help because that ADGS had a similar problem and Acropivic helped a lot. So does it buzz? The first shivers come at around 6,000 RPMs. You can definitely feel them, but I wouldn't say it makes any problems except a little itch, even on 200. So it's fine for long rides. It buzzes less than the 1000XR or V-Storm, but the Tracer 9 is smoother. The Versys has just as much as the NT1100. On the other side, my iPhone stab died right when I tested the Versys. Wheel travels on both front and back are both 150 millimeters. This is the case when you can imagine how it'll work before you even ride it. But then you get a good surprise. The suspension matches with the motorcycle. It's squishy enough. As much as it can be with the travels, but the motorcycle traction is good. It doesn't swing, it doesn't take much effort to ride and turn quickly. If you adjust it for your style ones and it doesn't make much sense to mess with it anymore, it works pretty well. The only thing you might touch after that is its preload when you change the load. I liked how it works so much that I don't even get why I would need a skyhook. I just don't believe that I can get more from this short suspension. There might be some special conditions when a skyhook might shine, but I'm not sure someone is riding on a track all the time. Otherwise, the motorcycle doesn't dive deep anyway. The motorcycle doesn't like off-road anyway, and even if it would hold a like there, it would not make a killer feature for the model. But what makes a difference is the Versys price. The SE with its semi-active suspension touches the ground of a top-tier motorcycle where you have some higher performance expectations. When you just ride it on a little crappy pavement, even the basic suspension works flawlessly. I wouldn't pay an extra 2,000 euro for the SE that differs from the S version by having a semi-active suspension, even if it turns from a good one to a very good one. It doesn't seem worth it. Even more if you compare it to the basic model. I'll explain why I prefer the basic one soon. The SE costs about 4,500 euros more. While a Tracer and an XR might disappoint those who think they're buying an adventure bike, and it should work well off-road, with how stiff these motorcycles are, the Versys just handles rough terrain and broken pavement. I also rode some dirt roads, and I don't remember if it hit my hands. It will work well for touring and well enough for rough pavement. It doesn't have enough ground clearance for big bumps and rocks anyway, so if you face a difficult trail, you'll have to go slow and gently. Either way, the limiting factor here is the geometry, not the suspension. And here is where we should adjust our expectations. The Versys is good on a broken pavement. It's much smoother than the Tracer or the XR. But a Tiger 900 GT or a Multistrada V2 are one tier better while they are good enough to travel Asia and Africa. A Tiger 900 Rally or an Africa Twin go even further. You don't have to pay attention for bigger stones or sharper rocks. On a small dirt bike, you just fly over these rocks on a pillow. Every time you increase wheel diameter or suspension travel while keeping the same quality, you increase the motorcycle front drive and its sponginess. And this is for you to decide where to stop. If you are talking about the 150mm, the Versys has one of the best suspensions. Let's say the Cross Tour or the Versys 650, V Storm 650, and older NC 750X have some similar wheel travels but the cross tourer's fork works worse than the ones on the Versys. While all the middleweight bikes just have cheap and junky suspension that are a few tiers worse than ones on the Versys. The V-Storm 1000 has one centimeter more travels, but the suspension works worse anyway. Even in the softest position, the motorcycle rides well and doesn't wiggle just because the travel is short. You only get the cons when you're going close to 200 kilometers an hour. It loses its stability. If you adjust it harder, it goes better. It's stable on the 200. It had a very minor swing above that, but it was expected with a touring windshield, so I don't blame the bike. Let's talk about versions. I think it's a good time. The S and the SE are packed with different mods motorcycles. They even have such aspects like adding cornering lights. 
When the model was released, this feature was only available at the top tier 1200cc adventure motorcycles. Even the 1250GS got it only a year ago as a paid extra mod. You don't expect it from a Japanese cheapo, do you? The S version in stock has everything you might expect from a touring motorcycle. The basic version. Before I learned the lineup, I thought it was another thing that no one's gonna buy and I have to get an S. After the reading, I got that it was a good offer. What's required is there, and what's not important wasn't. So here's what we have. The basic one has cruise control, an IMU, and it's full LED. Just add a few extras, like a quick shifter for 290 euros, heated grips for 270, and a pair of hand guards for 130. You can also add a touring windshield for 170, but you can still usually find a better aftermarket alternative. And that's it. You have a long journeys ready motorcycle with everything required for a fair price. Yes, the S and the SE might have a TFT screen and the cornering lights, but I won't miss them that much. The most expensive versions also have a better finish, but it doesn't affect neither speed nor comfort. And if you want to show off, you can cover it with vinyl as you want. And that feature when you can connect via Bluetooth to your cell phone, not to see navigation, but to see who's calling on the dash and play with some stats. I don't think it's a must for everyone. About the color screen, not a big loss. The basic one is useful enough. It can show you any two parameters as an addition to its always shown air and engine temperatures. The only interesting feature is to see your lean angles. So you don't lose too much choosing the basic screen. This is an uncommon case where I recommend you to the basic version. It gives you so much more value for the money. So in conclusion, the motorcycle didn't avoid some of the typical sport tour issues, most of which can be fixed with mods. A bit harder seat or lower handlebars might be fixed with a few dollars, but it doesn't buzz. The wind protection is good. It's a decent tour for its price. You should definitely consider it if you travel two up. To be continued with other adventure motorcycle reviews, so please subscribe so you don't miss them and stay tuned.